Greetings, my fellow Nakama, and welcome to another Q&A with a special guest. It's Craig Werner here for live from Japan, and you can uh, uh, announce yourself, introducing uh, who you are, maybe, and uh, many people don't know you here. Okay. Um, well, my name is uh, Greg Werner. Um, I'm originally from the States, but I live now in Japan. Uh, I've been here for, I don't know, 15, 16 years, something around that. And um, I started, uh, I've been a One Piece fan since around the year 2000 or so, 2001 maybe. And um, I began working with the series in around 2012 or so. I think around 2012 is when I started to um, uh, to be associated with the series. I think it was first, the first thing I did was I did an article on Z, uh, Film Z. And from there, I've been able to collaborate more and more and um, uh, have been selected by um, uh, Oda-san for a number of, of projects as well. And uh, that's kind of where I am now. So I, I do column writing for uh, both Shueisha and for Toei Animation. Um, that's not my main job. I just collaborate with them. Some people like to say, like, oh, Greg works for the, the man now. Like, he can't have a valid opinion. Uh, I I can say whatever I want. I can I can criticize them as much as I like, uh, and uh, but I I do respect them uh, for a lot of, of work they've done and for what they've done for me. And that's my kind of unique situation. Uh, somewhere between fan and official, there are some official duties I have, but I'm also considered uh, a, a fan as well. So uh, an interesting place to be. Uh, that's me in a nutshell. That's the short version. Yeah, I, I tell the people you have a, a lot of know-how about One Piece, uh, like in the One Piece quiz book, and uh, you're working with Oda, not every time, but but uh, in one project. And uh, we, we did some uh, Q&As in the past, and uh, some things are really still up, and, and some come true, and that's uh, the people are here. They are interested in, in your opinion. And, and the first question I have to you is, uh, what is your opinion about the Vano country arc but many people here in German are a, a, a bit disappointing about it sure I don't know if that necessarily carries over to Japan uh, that's I'll just kind of put that out there to, to begin with um, the vibe that I'm getting from here is uh, a quite a positive one personally um, there are a lot of bits and pieces that I like about Wano. I think a lot of it comes together well. I think the fights, while they're not peak One Piece, they're a lot better than they have been in in recent arcs. In recent, um, not years, but recent arcs, I guess. Um, but the biggie the the finale of the of the arc the um the clash between luffy and kaido it mm, i don't i do not like it i don't hate it i don't i also don't disrespect it i understand some of the things that he was trying to do there narratively and thematically um i get it but that doesn't mean i have to like it and i i don't in actually enjoy it i just i don't hate it I don't know if you want to go a little more detailed in that, but but yeah. Yeah, my my personal problem is is the current anime because it's looked more like a Dragon Ball Z than than One Piece in past. <laughs> uh, but 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 I'm okay with Vano arc. I I like the the Japanese folklore and uh, and stuff, uh, the lore and and it was a nice arc. But I I guess it was a too long arc. It's it's too long for over four years. Um, maybe people want to see another island, another plot, and and and, and so on and so on. Um, let's talk about the. the The, the recent uh, events in, in Vano, uh, like uh, Aramaki is coming, Ryo Kugio. Um, you, you say that in, in, in the, the past uh, Q&A, he will uh, let uh, Vano crone again with, with his wood uh, fru uh, fruit. Is it wood, wood fruit? Yeah, I guess. Um, Yeah, that, that, that's, that was very cool. Okay. Uh, but um, people are a disappointment because uh, Ryu Kyukyu came to Wano and, and claimed, I want to take the head of Luffy. And then he goes away because Shanks is coming. And, and there is uh, one of the, the biggest questions at, at, at the moment. Yonko or 
admirals of the Navy. Yeah, who, who is the strongest? Ma many people say they are equal. Others say the three admirals uh, against one Yonko. That's a, that's a fair fight. Um, it's 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 it depends on chapter. Uh, like they they um, chose the strange. What what is your opinion about that? Sure. Um, well, again, I, I think I need to frame this. I need to be careful what I say because I don't want to offend people who have their own thoughts, opinions, ideas, or theories. Um, boy, how, how should I put this? Um, because I have an idea or a theory doesn't mean that I think another one is poor or not going to happen. Um, it's just I'm recognizing patterns that appear in Oda's work, and those patterns aren't always there. They won't always show up. They're not always patterns. Uh, there are certain things that happened at the climax of Wano that, that I believe should have happened but did not. Um, but that's just kind of my, what, what do you need, sweetheart? My, my wife is looking at me and she's, I, she's saying, I need something. And she's pointing and she's trying to be lovely and okay. All right. She's good. <laughs> Love you, sweetie. Um, and, um, so, uh, right. I, I, I don't think anybody's ideas or, or their thoughts for powers or, or fighting or who, how many, Yonkos are equal to an admiral. How many admirals are equal to Yonko? Um, I don't want to step on anybody's theories for those. But here is is what I've recognized in the work, is that uh, Yokogyu, when he shows up, uh, he dominates. He takes the morning morning fruit, and he he pretty much dominates the the situation. He takes out two people, almost almost immediately. Um, but. Um, Soon after that, he finds out, especially when um, when uh, Momonosuke manages to do the the Boro breath. Uh, he you, you see that he's not panicking, but you see that they are affecting him. You see that they're having some sort of effect on him, uh, and that they're possibly like if that battle continued unhindered. He probably would have won if Luffy didn't interfere, as we later learn that like Luffy and, and the crew were actually monitoring the situation, which is a great a great way to handle that. Um, but uh, Oda's hints there as to the, the strength of Ryokugyu are that uh, Ryokugyu assessed the situation and he said, Ooh, these people of Wano are actually a little bit more tough than I gave them credit for. He probably would still have beaten them if that continued unhindered. But he realized that uh, not only was Shanks there, um, but also he, he had to deal with Luffy. And I think he thought in his mind quite cleverly, um, or, or perhaps I should, it's not clever, it's anybody would realize this, but, but realistically, is he thought, wait a minute, okay, these, these folks are a little bit more dangerous than I assumed. I have Shanks over there. And I have Luffy over there. <clears throat> now, separately, I could probably... I don't know about Luffy. 1v1 Luffy. I mean, 1v1 Luffy is... That's why... That's why I don't like the conclusion of the fight with mm. Kaido. Uh, I don't like... But um, so that, that's tough. I, he might probably feel like he could take 1v1 Luffy at this point. Um, even though, technically, according to the story, and according to what we know about the world, he probably shouldn't be able to be. Mm, that that's why it makes it kind of tough. But anyway, so why I don't mind that is because L Oda put in those subtle hints that oh the the Wano fighters are starting to affect him. He sees that he has Shanks, and he sees that he also has on top of that Luffy to deal with. And I think that's why he was like, I'm out of here. Um, that's why I buy that. That's why that's okay with me. I know there are a lot of hardcore fans who might be like very into power levels and such. Um, I understand that, but, but I think that Oda did his work in trying to get us to understand, uh, why he left realistically. Yeah. My problem with Aramaki was, um, uh, it was my wish if an admiral comes to Wano, it have to be Aramaki because he was the new one. And that's the point. He's a new character uh, so far. Even we get teased him, uh, many chapters before, but it it don't have to come to a fight with Luffy because it, it the the ending of this fight will not be good anyway. Uh, Aramaki beats Luffy. Luffy 
is an emperor now. That, that's, that's not good for, for his uh, promotion and, and, uh, and such. And uh, Luffy beats Aramaki isn't good because it will... It's a waste of that character because I guess Oda just want to uh, introduce this character finally, and that's the point. But uh, you mentioned it, Shanks come up, and and uh, here in Germany, Jank, oh my god, Shanks, oh my god, Shanks, Shanks is uh, really hyped here. And then um, a chapter later, he's gone. <laughs> he said, "Oh no, I yeah. can't talk to Rufy. It's about uh, Bartolomeo." Um, uh, and and many people think. Um, that that was a, a a hind for Oda. It's just a promotion for film red. Uh, and that's it. And and, and there was never any <laughs> anything planned else. Um, people are disappointing. Yeah? People wanted uh, to see Luffy uh, hands over the the straw hat back to Shanks. Um, what do you think? What what was Shanks' intention to come to Wano? And uh, is the information about Bartolomeo come in between, uh, or was there an information he had from the start? Um, so the Shank, okay. If people are saying Shanks is just there to promote film red, it's not wrong. Um, I mean, he obviously is there to help promote, promote film red, but Oda's not doing that just to make him promote film red. Um, I think when you have parts of the story where characters just are in the story just to promote something, that's where you've got like like Shiki. Like Shiki was brought up. Um, the the issue with Shiki is is that Shiki wasn't intended originally to be just movie only. Like Shiki was supposed to have been mentioned um, back when Shanks and uh, Whitebeard had their meeting in around volume. Was it 40? I always miss this up. 46, 47? 46? 45. 40, 45. Even worse. 45. Um, volume 45. When they had their meeting there, um, he wanted to mention Shiki there. Not because of the movie, but uh, he just, as a character in the world, he wanted to mention Shiki. But he was like, no, nah, I don't want to confuse people. I don't want to get them all loaded up with too much lore, which is part of Oda's problem is he doesn't he doesn't trust the entire fan base enough to be able to take that much information, um, which I wish he'd do more. But he's also not wrong because he's also trying to go for like casuals. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with, with trying to get the casual reader because that's who he's writing for. Oda is always writing for the casual reader. Don't make a mistake and think that like Oda is writing specifically for pe people like us <laughs> who analyze. The like, I think they asked me one time, they're like, you you do a podcast on One Piece? And I was like, yeah, I, I work with, with the One Piece podcast from time to time. And they're like, how often do you do episodes? And I was like, oh, we, we do episodes every week. And they're like, how how do you talk about One Piece every week? Like, how do you have enough to talk about? I'm like, are you kidding me? You're the people making it. Um, of course there's enough to talk. You could talk about it endlessly for, for a week, you know. You could talk about the anime for a week. You could talk about the manga for a week. So they, I think they just kind of underestimate um, a, a lot. Like, they, they know that, that mega fans exist, but they're writing the series for the casual readers. I think it was um, famously described behind the scenes one time is like the per the perfect per the perfect reading of one piece is like on the toilet is like you should like sit on the toilet be able to read a chapter be like huh that was pretty good and then like go on with your day <laughs> like that's that's the target um so when when uh oda puts in shanks like that like is he promoting the movie yes of course he's promoting the movie but please understand that this was a highly coordinated effort and that the idea to end Wano, to place it around the, the timing of the movie, to use even the, the uh, using Shanks in the movie um, was all centered around the idea that One Piece is entering its final stages and he's trying to streamline it to that point. They've been talking about we're entering the final chapter, we're entering the final chapter for a long time now and Ever since they've been taught, ever since they started talking about this final act, that's where all of this came towards this release. You know, 
uh, wrapping up Wano came towards this time. Um, uh, the the character, uh, even if you look at some of the the recent chapters, if you believe that a silhouette is indeed Uta, um, then there are certainly parts of the the chapters that have coincided with the, the certainly the promotion leading up to this movie. Um, so it's not wrong to say that. Is that wrong as a as an author? Is it wrong to promote your work that way? If there is no point to the series to have your character there, then I absolutely believe that is the point. Where I think some fans might fall into an issue with this and get frustrated with this is where they think a character being meaningful in the series means fighting or means uh going going in, in in entering a direct conflict a drawn out conflict you can't do do that i mean if oda wanted to do something unique here at the end of the the this the the arc um then he could have done that um i there are sometimes i, I don't even i'm not even of the opinion that i wish he didn't do that it would be kind of cool to have something different but again looking at patterns you look at how art each arc has ended each arc has had this clear definition of closure with the people of the island and then moving on and we needed that closure <coughs> and if shanks was to to enter the the main story and be an antagonist or be a i, I think uh what are, i was discussing this recently better than antagonist an obstacle to luffy at this point that would mean derailing the story and you'd never get your closure for this for this arc that's that's talking about theory of a story by oda um how to write a story if he he has not detracted from that so far um he's done different things with it he's had like luffy lose or or a or the straw hats lose before like that has happened um but in terms of that closure and how to separate one arc to another arc um without them blending um that has and I'm just thinking off the top of my head, pretty much always occurred, except for maybe Impel Down. But Impel Down is is its own special thing. Like it's Impel Down is is somewhat unique, and I like that aspect of it. Um, but even Impel Down had its own closure, um, in the sense that we we literally changed locations. If Shanks appeared at Wano, and then there was a clash at Wano, um, that would have dragged the story down. Maybe some people would have liked that. I, I don't disagree. It would have been exciting. But it's just not the kind of story progression that Oda does. So anybody who was expecting that, um, I do apologize. But maybe now you know what to expect for the rest of the story. Like that kind of thing doesn't really happen. Uh, but yeah, I, I, that's kind of my my super long answer. I don't know if I answered the question which you were looking for originally, but those are my thoughts. <laughs> no, you uh, you answer another question because of the silhouette of Uta, maybe in in the recent chapters, uh, but because people say this is Uta, you can't see anything else there, and uh, she she is confirmed now as a canon character, right? Uh, as far as I know, she is not confirmed as a canon character. Um, unless unless they've said something, I I don't pay a lot of attention to the One Piece news cycle, the official releases and, and stuff these days, um, as much as I used to, um, because it all it all comes out from so many different places and so many different locations. So uh, if they've said something like that is Uta, I I haven't heard that. Um, it looks to be her, and for the time being, I consider her in the same spot as I do uh, Shiki and Zephyr, in that they are probably part of the world. Um, where they are right now and, and their their motivations right now might not be entirely clear, but it does look to me like that was intended to be Uta. I am probably, well, th that's that's in one of my upcoming articles. Let's see if they publish it or not. Um, if they publish it, maybe that's a confirmation. Yeah, um, my tough about the panel was um, if this would be Uta, uh, Oda couldn't ma ma make it more clear. Uh, because it wasn't the new character for us. Uh, already uh, the world knows about Uta and uh, the fact she is uh, the daughter of Shanks. Um, but you, you mentioned Shiki, the golden lion, uh, uh, part. Uh, I, we, we have some mysterious 
persons in in the world of One Piece. In the recent chapter, I, I will come to this uh, later, um, we have this mysterious person who is uh, on a cover story with Krokos on the reverse mountain and he was drinking booze with him and and peop people want to know who is this. And and the first half, in, at least in Germany, is always it's Skopa Gaban. Because every person, like the, the Uta panel, it could be Skopa Gaban maybe because everyone waiting for Skopa Gaban. Uh, what is your tough about this person? We, we don't, uh, we, we just see him from behind. Um, my first tough is maybe Cheeky because old, old era booth characters, but uh, he must be uh, familiar with, with, with Krokos, uh, or, or is he just mm -hmm. a, a random person passing by and said, hey, Krokos, I, I, I got some booze, let's, let's drink <laughs> and, and make the world uh, uh, think about uh, us too. What do you think? Who was this person? I don't, I guess first, I don't, I don't get the, the fascination with Scoppers Gavin. Like, I don't dislike it. it again, I need if I sound like I'm over explaining myself, it's to be careful not to offend anyone because I have a lot of haters out there who like to say Greg said this or that. And all I want to do is is let people who are not haters know that I'm not black and white with my ideas. I'm not if I don't have an if I don't like if I don't subscribe to this idea, it means I don't like it or that I think it's impossible. That's not the case. Um, I think everything is gray. Um, especially in, in One Piece, because you, you never know whether it's going to be true or not, or whether Oda will change his mind or not. Um, but with an end with with Scoppers, I don't understand the 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 fascination with him. Like he he yes, he's a character. He's probably going to be in the story at some point in some form or another. But like when it comes, it'll come. Um, I'm not. I have no expectations for that. Um, because once you start to get expectations, then you build up this image in your mind, and when it shows up, then it might be it. Chances are pretty good that it's going to be not as good as your expectations. That's me personally. I'm not trying to lecture, or tell anybody how to enjoy the series, but like that's just my kind of theory. I, I, I am patiently looking forward to whenever Scoppers uh, Gavin shows up in the story if he's alive. Um, uh, it should be fun. Uh, I hope it will be. Uh, but I do not think that's Scoppers at all. Uh, I certainly don't think it's Shiki. Um, it's very likely that that's um, Captain Yoki um, from, or Yorkie, York, I, I don't know what the English is. It's Yorkie um, in Germany. From, yeah, Yorkie, Yorkie. Yeah. Um, I believe it's probably Captain Yorkie of the of um, the Roomba Pirates. Roomba Pirates, yes. And, yeah. Um, him being alive would be the greatest reward for Brooke. Um, Brooks, there, you have the great reward for Brook being, um, meeting with Laboon, right? Yes. Like, like, like that's big, but you need, I shouldn't say need. If you want to tell a great story, you should tell something, you should show us a reward beyond that because we're already expecting that. And I think the only way you could go beyond that is for Yorkie to be alive and for when Yorkie meets Brooke to throw back a phrase at Brooke that Brooke has used before, that would be that would bring his story full circle. That would be, bring his emotional arc full circle. Uh, when Brooke first joins, uh, he's he's uh, he's grabbing his I think he's grabbing his forehead and he's um, and he's crying. He's in snot and everything. It's coming out of the skull. It looks really creepy, but it's it's very emotional. <laughs> And he says, uh, I'm glad, I'm so glad I, I'm alive, or I'm so glad I, I stayed alive, or I'm still alive. I think it would be super emotional if that's Yorkie and if he met Brooke. And Brooke says that I'm glad that, that I stayed alive, right? Mm. But how emotional would it be if someone went to Brooke and said to said to Brooke, I'm so glad that you're alive. Oh, oh, like I would it would wreck me. Um, so I, I think that's that's the reward at the end of uh, of Brooke's tunnel is for that to be Yorkie and for him to uh, thank Brooke for remaining alive. Um, that would mean so much to him and that would bring his story 
in such a good complete circle. Um, I, I would love I would love to see that, but again, I'd love to see it doesn't mean it needs to happen or that's necessarily what I want to happen. What I want to happen is something that I don't expect. <laughs> I like that too. That, that's that's my point. Uh, I I want to see something I don't expect. But but you say uh, the expectation uh, from a character is much bigger than when it comes to uh, don't let's don't talk about Orochi. <laughs> uh, Orochi before Wano Arc was legendary swordman, better than Mihawk, uh, better. Uh, uh, Uncle from Zoro, father of Zoro, uh, grandfather of Zoro, Kuina. <laughs> uh, it was it was a big expectation, and uh, I I was uh, someone to say, uh, wait a minute, people, uh, maybe he's a, a spend them two pound, uh, 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 spend them two, um, and yeah, we got a Rochi, but he was a, a good antagonist. Yeah, he was really good. Yeah, yeah but uh, not that what uh, people expected. Um, Uh, but uh, now uh, we have uh, two uh, mysterious persons in uh, chapter 1056, the recent chapter. Um, the first is uh, the one with the burnt scar. And, and, pe and people uh, do theories about who is the man uh, with the burnt scar Kit mentioned in the last chapter. Um, my, my, my first intent was it's Zabo because he has a, a, pro, a prominent uh, burn scar in his face. Uh, but, but many people said no, he, he can't mean a kid, uh, other, uh, Zabo, uh, because he wants someone who help him to read road panoclyphs or uh, have them panoclyphs. So, what, what is your opinion about the man with the burn scar? I have uh, an additional theory I did uh, recently in a video. Maybe it was Crocos because Crocos had this word uh, a scar on his left arm. Maybe it is a burn scar. And Crocos was a character back then in Reverse Mountain arc, but the fact he is a, a former Roger pirate wasn't a, a topic back then. Yeah, it was a, a fact we get many many years later uh, about him because so Crocos can uh, can could come be uh, important with the fact he was a former Roger pirate and I guess Kit have to meet him back then when he comes from South Blue to Grand Line. So so what what is mm. your opinion about the man with the burnt scar? So a, a lot of times if if people know from my, my previous interviews and I think I've mentioned this a few times in my, my Christmas interviews with you um, I'll say I don't know if, or I don't think that Oda actually has this planned out yet. Um, I think he, he might have thrown you know, something, some information out there, and he doesn't really know what he wants to do, or he hasn't decided. Although I do say that quite a bit, uh, I do think that this is something that Oda has decided upon, and it is something that, that um, he's, in other words, theorization of who this character could be, um, would probably be fruitful. Um, I don't often say that. But if it's a character we've met, then I think theorizing um, based on raw data, similar to um, uh, Kanjiro, hmm. similar to people who, who called Kanjiro, um, I think it would... would um, uh, I don't think it's a fool's errand to do so. I think you, some people will accurately call this. Um, personally, uh, I, I think that maybe a, a good call would be, uh, Kuzan, um, because of his battle with, um, do, 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 Sakazuki, uh, and he lost his leg there, uh, he probably bears some other, uh, scars from, from fire magma, I mean, he specifically says Hino Kizu, right, so that, that might, Uh, take him down a few pegs in, in terms of uh, probability. He doesn't say like magma no kizu or something like that. Specifically, he no kizu. Um, so it could be something different. But uh, he's a fairly good bet, I think, just because of the fact that we don't know entirely what his allegiances are. I mean, my God, there is no way I believe that that Kuzan will be a a straight up raw villain by the end of the series. Um, even if he is aligned with Blackbeard, because, I mean, just look at Drake. Look what Drake did. Um, the only thing that's a little weird here is that would Oda pull the same thing twice? <clears throat> um, 
you know, having that that turn uh, in terms of uh, uh, loyalty. Uh, is he going to do that again? If so, not cool, Oda. Like, it's two times for Marines? Eh. And, I mean, technically three if you want to count Corazon. But um, regardless, I don't know. Uh, I guess my thought right now is is Kuzan is a, is a fairly safe bet. Um, Sabo sounds completely feasible, but, but what would be the, the point of it? What, why would he need to align? You okay, sweetie? Yeah. Um, what, what would be the, what would be the point of uh, aligning with the, uh, with the rebels at this point? Um, I don't really know. Yeah, that, that's that's the problem about about the burn scar, uh, right? But 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 here in in theories there comes Scopa Gaban because yeah, it's it's so long and maybe yeah the burn scar. Every every silhouette, every mysterious person is Scopa Gaban. So no no worry about it. It's, a, it's like a meme. It's like a meme. Um, I I hope he he it shows up any time so we have uh, lost this meme um we have a, another a mysterious person in this chapter uh caribou mentioned because he has this big informations about Chiroshi being uh, poseidon and um bl where where is bluton is it's bluton bluton in uh, in japanese bluton, bluton. um bluton, yeah. where is bluton and he mentioned i give this to a certain person and my question is wh who do Caribou knows because we 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 know already his his whole story uh, when he comes to Sabaody becoming a super rookie want to join the Straw Hats want to assassinate the Straw Hats from inside then going to Fishman Island uh, trying to uh, kidnap some mermaids learning about Poseidon become a Jim Base cover story he he's uh, back to the surface and then he has this Shikevara cover story of uh, Kaido's island and then DS Drake uh, showed up and and bring him to the prison who 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 will he know yeah also, uh, where, where can could he be this person the, the first half we had Blackbeard because he's the last big player uh, who can uh, use this uh, information because I don't think uh, Caribou will go to world government or, or to Mar uh, to Navy um, or Shanks I guess he's uh, the wrong person as, as well so uh, what is your tough who could uh, uh, Caribou mean um, so here here is a good question for, for everyone when he says Anohito, like that, that certain someone, is he talking about the same person? Because <laughs> that is exactly the kind of BS that, that Oda would pull. Is like, when he says, like, Anohito, the first time, he, mean, he means Kaido. I, I don't know that he does, but I'm just saying, like, what if, what if that's what he meant? What if he's just trying to be like, um, he's trying to make him annoying on, on, intentionally? Um, so when he, he keeps, he, he uses the phrase, anohito, anohito, like that certain someone that's, is he talking about the same person every time or is it just who he can use or who he can abuse? Um, that's, that's my, my, that's a big question. Uh, I think you can go either way with that. You can make arguments in favor for the other. I think just in terms of succinctity, make the story simple. I believe that it is the same person. But it, 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 there is a chance that it might not be. Personally, I, I believe that it is. So who is it then? Uh, sure, is, is Blackbeard the big player? Um, absolutely at this point. But mm, I don't know. Because it seems a bit obvious. And that might be the red herring itself. The, the fact that it's so obvious, it might actually just be that. But be interesting to me if he was in league with Buggy. Um, because it... Buggy's thing, but Buggy has no power, right? He Buggy Buggy's actual power is is in manipulating, and in the fact that he controls almost to a Germa level, Germa sixty six level of control, like controlling minions, like he controls those level six prisoners, and in turn, um, everybody beneath them or or above them that is, that is with him. So um, his part of how you gain control is through information 
and it's it's very possible that um, <laughs> Buggy will be privy to that information, and that will give him a leg up. Um, how crazy would that be if our first boss character um, ends up with information on what <laughs> what Poseidon and Pluto are? <laughs> Yeah, the the, the fact though, because the, the the buggy, buggy is is a, is a big lacquer, uh, so he has the luck to become a shishi bouquet and become a yonko now with uh, hawk eye and crocodile as his uh, commanders. I don't know how the cross guild work uh, right now, and how how did do this happen because i i toughed oh my god why why would this uh, people Hawk, uh, hawkeye was was a was a lone wolf all the time yeah, maybe perona and zoro in the time skip but more or less a lone wolf and and crocodile was the boss himself yeah he said i am the boss yeah, i don't want to be uh, the, the underling of another one like uh, he uh, he said no to doflamingo at marina fort uh, and now he, he said, oh, Buggy, uh, he's, he's, he's cool, he's a former <laughs> Roger Pirate, he's, he's the best of all uh, after Shanks or no. Um, and and, and I, I, I like the idea, uh, Caribou thinks the same and thinks Buggy is the big player. And he says he's the greatest emperor and he's new and he has this uh, mighty underlings. Uh, I go to him and join the, the cross guild uh, with, with this information. Uh, I, I like this idea. I like this idea because uh, Blackbeard, I, I don't know how I uh, image the situation. He gives him the information and said, make me the 11th Titanic captain. And Blackbeard said, we're yeah, cool and kill him afterwards for the for the swamp fruit <laughs> for, for some of his... Uh, um, for Titanic captains who not have a devil fruit now. And, and that's the point we come to the next question, Gecko Moria. Because Gecko Moria was yeah. with Blackbeard and many people want to know uh, how is this situation ended. Some people say uh, Blackbeard killed Gecko Moria for the Shadow Shadow fruit and give it to some of his Titanic captains or Gecko Moria joined the Blackbeard Pirates. I can't believe because Gecko Moria is similar to Rufy in some way, like he care for his Nakama and uh, in this situation they uh, killed Absalom right before uh, he uh, make him this offer to join the, the Blackbeard Pirates. And I can't see Gekko Maria say, yes, of course, I, I'm with you and don't care about Absalom because he own Absalom and another one at Marina Fort and uh, save his, uh, his, his ass. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. What, what do you think? What, what happened with Gekko Maria? Because I, I had this, this, this wish, more, more wish than theory. Uh, Gekko Maria comes to Wano, helps Luffy in, in fight against Kaido because because uh, Kaido was the nemesis of Gekko Moria. So, um, a lot of this depends on whether you believe Absalom is dead or not. Uh, and I, I think the knee-jerk reaction is, of course he's dead, you know. Uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Shiryu has his power. Or is that what Oda wants you to think? Right? Um, is we, we still know so little about the devil fruits um, that I think to declare him dead, even after all the death we've seen in Wano, which is wonderful, it means that there are actually consequences for taking certain actions again and taking sides. That's amazing. I praise that. But even so, I do strongly question whether Oda would, would kill his character off screen like that. Because killing a character for Oda is usually a big deal. Um, it's Killing a character is usually a traumatic experience for him because of the traumatic experience that he experienced reading Fist of the North Star. And when I think it was Rey... Um, uh, sorry, spoilers on a 20, 30, 40-year-old... Not 40, but 30-year-old manga. Sorry. Um, but uh, he, he does not like to kill. So... Um, I don't know if he could have done in Absalom like that. I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not sure. Like, you look at Pedro. Pedro had a big send-off. If Pedro is dead, there, there are some ways that could be worked around. Um, but the, the, the point is, he handles it as if he's dead, so I consider him dead. Uh, uh, certainly, um, Yasuye had an on-screen death that was massive. 
um he's oh my god um i i never saw that coming and um uh, even uh, ashra ashra dolji uh, again all deaths that that we if not we didn't see a grisly body with body parts like splayed out right um i think the closest we came was yasuye who we see get pretty shot up pretty grisly um but there's nothing with with absalom it's just a mention oh he's dead and we see his devil fruit powers in somebody else i don't know i i'm suspicious of whether he's dead or not um and that in turn creates a question mark as to whether whether what well, excuse me what gecko moria is willing to do or not do for blackbeard um were they just using that as a means to control him and still fear in him i'm not sure so hmm, what do i believe happened right now I, I believe that blackbeard wants to use him as a tool um and since we have this whole thing with rocks coming up right and and rocks seems to be dead um maybe that is something to do with with gecko moria's powers um doing something with rocks and gecko moria i mean gecko moria's whole thing is about you know, bringing back dead not that he's the only one who can do it you know he needs basically his team to 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 be able to do that but like um i do wonder if bringing rocks back into the story is is by some means blackbeard intends to use gecko moria uh, as a as a zombie zombie um controller we'll yeah we, we, and then we get a no in a new mighty zombie uh like ryuma uh, and and if he, if he has the, the, the right shadow well, i don't know which shadow he will use maybe uh hey edward weevil the first half yeah edward weevil shadow because this yeah. character is meh, way um but yeah i i, I think this is uh, very really interesting and you say that right we we don't know about devil fruits after all yeah oda mentioned in fan post and said yeah at some point a professor will come and and tell us everything about devil fruits and i guess we, we can suggest uh, that that Vega Punk, yeah, and Vega Punk have to show uh, in in the next uh, arcs. Um, it has to come <laughs> at some point, yeah. Oda, uh, don't uh, Daniel uh, us uh, Vega Punk. Um, Devil Fruit is a, is a question from the chat uh, before. Um, the the, um, the artificial uh, Devil Fruit of Momonosuke, and and people say uh, Vega Punk mentioned it's a failure. But what we see in Vano arc and, and people say, oh my god, this is a perfect copy of, uh, of uh, Kaido's devil fruit and he has no failures at all. He can do everything, maybe about the hybrid uh, version of, of his devil fruit he didn't show yet. Uh, but what do you think about it? Why uh, Vegapunk said it's a failure just to uh, make shenanigans with Navy and world government or uh, it has so at some point a failure we will see uh it we've already seen it um the the failure is in uh its inability to uh, it's i should say not inability it's difficulty in transferring from form to form mm. uh, and this is something that momonosuke seems to have mastered um from from what little i've seen it certainly looks like he's mastered it um, but very early on, uh, Momonosuke was not able to freely change between the two. Uh, it only happened when he was surprised, and which is funny because it was the chapter where he was surprised at hearing the name Kaido, and he ch he changed. He changes. He's he's a boy on board, and then he hears the name Kaido, and <clears throat> in the next panel, he's the dragon, going like, huh. Um, uh, that's the chapter where I knew, I basically knew the entire story of Wano in terms of thematically, but, um, that's, that's when they're on their way to Dressrosa. It's an in-between chapter. They're on board the Sunny and they're making their way to Dressrosa. Um, that was why it was a failure. Um, at, at least as far as we can tell from what information we have is that he could not change freely. It was only when he was in, at an emotional high um, I don't know if it was necessarily shock. It certainly seems to have been shock. 
but uh, when he was at emotional high, he cha- he flipped back and forth. He couldn't be like and freely flip as it seems that he can now. Um, so was it as much as a failure as Vegapunk thought? Maybe not, but perhaps he considered it a failure because of of um, its its lack of inability to change like that. Well, my tough was uh, he has this trouble with this uh, artificial uh, devil fruit is about he's a young and weak character um, and not used to uh, use a devil fruit. We, we saw this in, in the flashback of, of Luffy with Ace and Zabo. He has trouble to, uh, to master the Gomo Gomo no Mi. Back then it was the Gomo Gomo no Mi. You know, with, uh, in between we have the Hito Hito no Mi mystical uh, Nika. Um, yeah, I guess it's 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 very very interesting at this point. Uh, what about this devil fruit and uh, so on? Um, let, let's talk about the Hito Hito no Mi uh, and and uh, as well Shanks because uh, people say Shanks. Uh, had this plan to steal the Hito Hito no Mi from uh, from the world government from Cypherpole uh, Nine, uh, who is who, and 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 bring it to Luffy. Yeah? Uh, but where do he know? Yeah? Where he got this information? Is it on a, an, on a Ponocliff and and Odin tell him about the Hito Hito no Mi because it was in fact the Devil Fruit of Joy Boy? And uh, said, uh, you must give him the, the, the one I'm waiting for, the, the, the one Roger waiting for uh, has to have the Hito no Mi because Roger didn't have the Hito no Mi. And this was one of uh, the, the, the points he couldn't do what he wanted to do and uh, the next Joy Boy will do. So what do you think? Did, did Shanks know about everything or did, is this all a big incident? I do not want to believe, I'm not going to say it's impossible, but I would not like to believe that uh, Shanks essentially groomed Luffy to be what Luffy is. Um, I have no problem uh, believing that or or accepting that, that Shanks may have seen what kind of person Luffy could be and just being like, wow, like I... I want to do what I can for this kid. This kid needs a chance. Um, the world is not fair. He needs a chance against the world. I'm going to give him that chance. I don't think that's necessarily making him eat the devil fruit for me. That's the scene from chapter one where uh, he he sacrifices his arm to save Luffy. Um, that's his bet. That's his that's his him giving Luffy that chance. Um, the devil fruit, I think, was just a complete accident. Yeah. Now, I hope that fate... Oh, God. I hope that fate doesn't become a huge, massive part of this. I think Oda is, is somewhat shying away from that, in the fact that you have uh, that chapter where Kaido is like, Hey, I just got one question. Who are you? And he's like, Me? I'm Monkey T. Luffy. <laughs> um, uh, that answers so many questions and, and sets aside like, oh, he's just, this is just Joy Boy now. This is, w- w- our story is on rails because we just have the ultimate power right now. Um, no, Luffy is Luffy. Uh, and I, I don't think Shanks ever intended for Luffy to, to gain that power. But once he did, further, he thought, well, I'm just going to give this kid what I can. I, also important is that I, I think the only reason Shanks gives him this chance or he likes to give him these opportunities are because Luffy constantly proves himself over and over again to have the same kind of qualities um, that that uh, maybe he saw in Roger. And I think what grooming means to different people can affect how you you view that scene. And if some people view it that way and they want to criticize it that way, there's not much I can say other than that I I don't think anything that that Shanks was doing was for a selfish reason. Uh, I think he's doing something for the world, and I don't think that that initial eating of the fruit was intentional. Is he giving him opportunities and chances that other people might not have had? Yes, but 
I think he's only giving him those opportunities because Luffy is constantly proving himself to be worthy of them. And that's the difference. That's why I don't believe it's just like, he's like, oh, this kid needs to be special. So I'm going to give him the fruit and then I'm going to save his life. And I'm going to keep giving him these opportunities to be great. And I'm going to go to Wano and I'm going to do hockey and it's going to save his ass. No, I don't think uh, that's that's the crux of what he's doing because that would defeat the purpose, right? Um, I think it's just he wants Luffy to have the opportunity to be what he can be. Uh, and if Luffy fails, then Luffy fails. And, and that's it. Game over. Yeah, I guess this will not happen because this is already in shonen manga. And <laughs> shonen manga, we already know from chapter one, Luffy will become pirate king. That's that's the the basic of the story, I guess. Oda will not uh, Daniel us uh, this this dream of of this boy because uh, One Piece is all about dreams. Um, my guess was uh, Shanks was looking for the certain person Roger was looking for, and maybe he heard rumors about the son of of Roger and. He He looked for the son of Roger and uh, looked for Ace, but uh, didn't find him because he didn't know where he is and uh, stumbled into Rufy and said, oh, my God, maybe he is the one uh, Roger was waiting for all the time. And uh, let's be uh, head back. Uh, okay. <laughs> I will. I, I, I'd like to hope that he didn't find Luffy and that's immediately what he thought. But over time, if, you know, in spending time with Luffy, um, and not like he was actively seeking out Luffy, but like just seeing, experiencing this boy and like seeing what he would come out with, the things that he would say, um, just being like, this is uncanny. Like who, who is this child and why is, you know, like he seems really special. I should probably keep an eye on him. I hope that's how it plays out. I pray that's how it, it if it's anything other than that, boo, boo. <laughs> Yeah, and let's head back to Wano because uh, there are some people disappointed about Wano is ending now and we will leave uh, yeah. Wano soon. And we have this um, yeah, unsatisfied things we get promised by Oda. Like Zoro mentioned before, he wants to meet uh, the, the crave of Ryuma. And, and we didn't see it. Yeah, Maybe he did uh, already and it wasn't that important. Or maybe he mentioned this and, and said, okay, when, when all is done, yeah, when Pi Rufy is Pirate King, I beat Mihawk, I will go to the grave of Ryuma and uh, give him the honor he, he, he takes. What do you think? Uh, why, why we don't see uh, Zoro at the grave at uh, Ryuma? For the very reason you are asking me that question. That is exactly why. Oda knows every week when he's giving his readers a question uh, a, a, that, that will be a topic of debate and will create a buzz and will create a sensation around a certain aspect of the series or a certain character or a relationship between two characters. And Oda knows exactly what he's doing. Oda also know what, knows what he's doing by not addressing that Grim Reaper stuff um he did not just throw that in there um now i'm still up in the air about whether that was real or not i if you read my my crazy theories i have a bunch of theories on for and against why it it definitely was or it definitely wasn't a grim reaper i can argue both points um but the fact is he he left that out there with nothing uh and that's deliberate the same reason for uh yuma's grave is he wants people to be talking about it the other mm, The other reason is uh, it probably wraps up a couple of aspects of Zoro's genealogy. And I don't think Oda wants to address that maybe just yet. So, yeah, that's probably the other reason. <laughs> yeah, people are a little bit uh, disappointed about the Vano arc and, and the Zoro conclusion we got there uh, about uh, where's Zoro's family we, we all we, we all expected this is the Zoro arc like uh, dr like whole cake island was the Sanji arc but this is this is I uh, just a speculation about because Oda mentioned at uh, Jump Festa this is the year of Sanji and uh, a year later he said this is the year of Sanji and all expecting oh Zoro must be the, the, the Vano uh, arc for him and uh, we, we got this story about Kosoboru 
uh, and and the, the village Shimotsuki, and we tell the people, uh, so I guess uh, other One Piece YouTubers do the same, and say, we got this story, yeah, Zoro is from East Blue, he's, he's born there, and uh, his... his um, yeah, <laughs> I guess I don't know the, the word about his 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 former his his dad and his grandfather where they were from Vano and coming with Kozaburu and uh, that's okay for me. Uh, but, but people will always this this specialization. And then Oda came up with uh, Shimotsuki Ushimaru. No, he's not the dad of of Zoro. And people are like, oh no, why again? <laughs> so, um. I I happen to know a little bit more about Zoro's lineage than the general public, so I can't elaborate too much on that. Um, but just to go back to what I said earlier, I think that Oda is deliberately he 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 has an idea. He knows the answer to this. Um, but I think he knows that people are going to discuss this and enjoy discussing it, like we are doing right now. Um, and that is why he's leaving it out there. Uh, if people are afraid whether he will or will not address this, whether it's in the series proper or additional material, I pretty much guarantee you that that Oda will address this at some point. It will be touched upon. And if if not, it will be touched upon and implied, if not outright stated as this is what it is. Um, but don't worry if you're wondering if Oda has an idea or not. Uh, yes, he does. And it's not like he sat there and told me the idea. Um, I just, I needed a piece of character information. I was granted a piece of character information. And I ran through the ideas of, of what that could mean. And I said, ah, okay, I think this is exactly what happened. And that is probably what the case will turn out to be. Um, but, uh, yes, there is there is something there. Just be patient. I, I think you will find it, if not in the series itself, then in additional material. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay with Zoro uh, like he is, okay? because he is this mega strong uh, warrior that is this competent and... Uh, that's all. I, I don't need special dad and moms and, and, and such. Uh, there's a, um, a question, and uh, people will, will kill me if I don't uh, tell them you. Kaido, big mom, this, this magma river uh, under, um, under Wano, um, they are dead? Or will we see them again? Yeah? Will they <laughs> go sail away uh, with a romantic <laughs> ending for this too, maybe? Um, but uh, yeah, that, that, that's the point. That, that, that's uh, the question we, we have here. Is Are they dead? And when they are dead, where are the devil fruits? We, mean, we need this devil fruit by, by new characters and at all. Uh, what, what is your opinion about Big Mom and Kaido's end? So, there's no way Big Mom is dead. Um, I still think she has a, a interesting story to tell along with Pudding. Uh, Kaido, I don't know. Kaido is, is rough. Like... Alright. If Kaido is still in the world, what Oda needs to do for Kaido is the same thing that he does to Luffy, which is he needs to stop him. Um, whenever we get to an arc, it's how is Luffy going to be stopped? How do we stop Luffy? How do we keep him from going to the end boss and destroying the end boss? Well, um, he had a little bit of an easier time in, in Wano because he tried that. He tried to go directly to the end boss and that did not work out in his favor. He went directly to jail, <laughs> which is <laughs> what an easy answer, right? For Oda. I bet he was just like, F it all. Luffy uh, goes to jail. <laughs> I mean, what what a way to handle that. It's like, no, let's skip all the, like, getting stuck between walls and, like, getting misinformation and going a different way. It's like, <laughs> he goes directly to jail. Anyway, um, that aside, um, Kaido needs a stop if he is still alive. I personally believe he's still alive because Luffy can't be a killer. Um... 
<clears throat> and oh well he didn't kill him with the punch it would have been the lava that killed him chicken or the egg kind of thing uh so my thoughts are that he is alive but how does oda stop him and i think that the key to oda stopping him would will be um his acceptance that luffy is joy boy um because you know he has that discussion with king you know before the before the final blow about who joy boy is and who who do you think joy boy is no i know who he is he's the guy that'll take me down i think that is enough of a believable stop for kaido for him to say to to come out of his situation <laughs> and to say look um he's joy boy he's going to change the world um i could go and try to take him down again but it's undeniable what he's capable of uh i believe in him and i think that's enough to stop kaido um it's not as violent as i think some some of the more like you know dragon ball inspired fans might want but i think it fits his character and his motivation um maybe more on this we'll learn when we we figure out what happened in god valley because kaido is kaido is damaged goods kaido and mom are both damaged goods they're psychologically messed up because of whatever happened in god valley uh, and the betrayal that they suffered there there is something that went down there that is awful i think the last time we had the hint that there was something this bad this terrible that occurred that we don't know anything about was the ohara incident um, I don't know how long some of the listeners have been fans, but like joining regular reading, like on time reading in Alabasta and like hearing about, you know, like this Ohara, like the devils of Ohara and like, um, not that we even had Ohara at that time, but like, just like, like whatever happened to Robin, um, like we, we couldn't imagine the tragedy of what it was and that's kind of our modern day ohara is whatever happened at god valley like something awful happened there and i hope that uh oda has been since wano i hope oda has been constructing that story um and kind of like how he, he wants it to run or how to play out um, because i don't know if he necessarily had all of the the machinations of it worked out but i hope that he's been tooling it for a long time and tweaking it uh, and making it into a a really really uh sorrowful story um for the the rocks pirates so i think that's that's where, where we are um if kaido is alive in summary uh i think that he has enough and this is this is not to to confuse his involvement with luffy with the marines because of what happened to his people um at the hands of Ryokugyu, um I think that he may attack the Marines. He may want to kill them. Um, but it's a different issue for him with Luffy. I don't think that he will be a, a stopping block for Luffy necessarily anymore. Yeah, I like the idea with, 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 with Kaido because I had uh, all the time this, this Thanos wipes with Kaido. Uh, as he... Uh, throw uh, Luffy uh, down from, from Onigashima, he sat down and said, ah, I'm satisfied and it's like in the end of Infinity War when, when Thanos did what he did and um, sat down in his garden and I, I can I can see this future for, for Kaido, he's an, a calm man he, he got, he, me, he met this, this guy who beat him yeah, it wasn't Odin back there because it was cheating and, and now he had this, this, this true fight against him I, I like this idea and yeah Big Mom, maybe in Elbaf arc I still hope for an Elbaf arc yeah, because it's, it's for me it's, it's a, a wish, a science I, I started with One Piece in, in 2001 January, that was the, the first volume came mm -hmm. out in Germany and and in in, in fan post there was three arcs uh, teased by Oda it was Fishman Island it was Wana Kuni and it was uh, Elbaf yeah, like the, the Vikings we need the Vikings in, in one piece 
So uh, we we got our uh, an, an an hour, and uh, I'm very grateful you you came to us and and uh, your your answers was amazing. Yeah, amazing. The the big mom thing this this will be <laughs> discussions for 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 weeks, I guess. Um, I, 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 I wish you a, a wonderful day. Yeah, uh, fun with Final Fantasy XIV, <laughs> and uh, I hope we can uh, do this again uh, in Please. some months. Yes, yeah. Um, so I would say, uh, guys, uh, do you have last words for for Greg? You can uh, write in the chat or later in the video comments. And I I say uh, goodbye, guys, and last words from from Craig. Uh, well, it was an absolute uh, pleasure talking with you. Um, I'm very happy to to be able to talk to to German uh, fans because you know my my heritage is is Germany. Um, I know embarrassingly little about it, um, but uh, it does you know make me feel a little bit special um, you know to know that uh, where I have my origin story or at least my family has its origin story. Uh, One Piece, the series that I love, is is very popular and has a strong fan base. Um, so that makes that makes me that makes my heart happy. Um, just some uh, some level of connection there. Uh, so thank you very much for having me. It was an absolute pleasure.